Hello guys and welcome to Aprender Español con el Chilango. My name is Victor and I'm going to be your Spanish teacher today. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Good vibes to you guys, wherever you are. Uh, whoever is watching this video, good vibes to you. Very welcome to your first, your first Spanish lesson. If you're not a beginner or you want to review your Spanish skills, so you're very, very welcome to my video. Okay, guys. Um, today I'm going to present the verb to be in Spanish. So let's start, let's start with good, good attitude. <laughs> so if you don't know the personal pronouns in Spanish, I'm gonna start with that. So we have here, yo, tú, usted, él, ella, nosotros, vosotros, ustedes, ellos, ellas. So we have yo, I, tú, you, Usted, you, well, this is formal, uh, él is he, ella is she, nosotros is we, vosotros is you, but I need to specify that I'm from Mexico and I don't use this guy, so you won't hear this here, sorry, ustedes is you and ellos and ellas is they right remember that in spanish we have masculine and feminine so it's important to say that that so notice that difference okay and now we have the verb to be the verb to be is this one so it's an irregular verb that is to say that it changed a little bit while conjugating this verb, right? So we have yo soy, tú eres, usted es, él, ella es, nosotros, nosotras somos, ustedes son, ellos, ellas son. So I'm going to repeat once again for you. Yo soy, tú eres, usted es, él, ella es, nosotros somos, ustedes son, ellos, ellas son. Okay? Now we have the verb to be. Let's continue how we use it. Uh, the first use we is to identify or define people or objects. So with our name, guys. Soy Victor, right? Say, soy Victor. And for instance, with objects, this is a pen. In Spanish, that would be, esta es una pluma. So, esta es una pluma. We are defining, so this is a pen. This is a cell phone, so este es un celular. This is a cell phone. Mm -hmm. And so on, so on, so on. Here we have more examples. ¿Qué es eso? What is that? It's a digital camera. And Cuba is an American country. Um, Cuba is un país americano, right? It belongs to America. That's, that's that uh, is to say, right? So let's continue with the profession, nationality, or ideology. We use the verb to be to express profession, nationality, or ideology. So. Soy estudiante, Chelo es peruana, el hermano de Ana es médico, Laika y yo somos musulmanes. So this is related to religion, right? So I'm a student, Chelo is from Peru, uh, Ana's brother is a doctor, and Laika and I, we are musulmans. So we use it to express profession, nationality, and ideology. We also use it to indicate the relationship between people. Luis y María son amigos. Luis and Maria, they are friends. Pedro and I, we are cousins, right? So we use it to express relationship between people. We also use to express qualities. For instance, Diana es muy inteligente. Diana es muy inteligente. Diana is very smart. Estos libros no son muy interesantes. These books are not very interesting. El coche de Eduardo es rojo. 
Edward's car is red. And Anna is rubia, Anna is rubia, Anna is blonde. So we use it to express some qualities. Little by little, we, we will notice the difference between these kind of uh, qualities we can express with verb to be. Okay. We also use to indicate time, quality, or price. So, ¿qué día es hoy? Es martes. What time is today? It's Tuesday. En mi clase somos 22. We are 22 people in this lesson as well. And ¿cuánto es esto? How much is it? And when we want to express the price, we always use it in plural, okay? Always plural version of that. Okay, let's continue. When we express time, most of the time, we use son. For instance, what time is it? ¿Qué hora es? Son las dos, son las tres, son las cuatro, son las cinco, son las seis. Always in plural. But the only exception is, es la una. Okay? We also use to say the place or the moment of an event. Let's imagine that today we have a party. And I ask my best friend, ¿Dónde es la fiesta? Where is the party? And my friend will say, es en la casa de Pedro. Is at Pedro's. And you will say, okay, thank you. We have years. We also use ser plus preposition de to indicate the origin, material, or possession, right? So, uh, origin. ¿De dónde son ustedes? Somos de Santander. Where are you from? We are from Mexico, right? From Santander, in this case. Uh, material. Esta silla es de plástico. This chair is made of plastic. So in Spanish, instead of saying it's made of, we say es de plástico. And position, possession. Whose dog is that? It's Edward's dog, right? In Spanish, you will say, ¿De quién, es ese, ¿de quién es el perro? Es de Eduardo. So we use it to show possession, right? Uh, in order to form negative sentences, we place no before the verb. So we have no somos hermanos. So you have you can find the negative version. No somos hermanos. We are not brothers. And Elsa is not from Argentina. It's from Chile. So we use it in, in that way. So the position is no, then followed by verb to be. Great. In questions, we usually place the subject after the verb. ¿Dónde es Alicia? ¿De dónde es Alicia? Sorry. ¿De dónde es Alicia? Uh, ¿Son tus padres de Salamanca? ¿Qué es eso? ¿Y de dónde eres tú? So for questions, as you can see, we use it before the noun. Uh, ¿Son tus padres de Salamanca? ¿Are your parents from Salamanca? Where are you from? What is that? Where is Alicia from? Right? Okay, guys, let's continue. So mostly we use the verb to be in that way. Well, let's continue with the second version of verb to be, which is star. And well, it's a little bit complicated, but we have a second conjugation. Is yo estoy, tú estás, usted está, él, ella está, nosotros estamos, ustedes están, ellos, ellas están. So, yo estoy, tú estás, usted está, ella está, ustedes están, ellos, ellas están, and nosotros estamos. Sorry, guys. Well, this is also to be, and that's why for you guys, Spanish should, could, sorry, could be a little bit complicated because in English you only have one, in Spanish we have two. So I, I'm trying to form this lesson to help you to identify when you can use star or when you can use ser. Okay, we use a star to indicate the physical situation of someone or something. Mis padres están en Caracas. They are there in Caracas, right? ¿Dónde está Monterrey? Está en el norte de México. Where is Monterrey? Is in the north of Mexico, okay? If you use star plus the name of person, that means 
to be here or there is not the name. It's not like the beginning. At the beginning, when we say "soy Victor," I I I can say "soy Victor," you know. But if someone ask someone else, let's say here in the room, "está Victor," that means is Victor there? So "está Victor." Here we have more examples. "Está Miguel." Buenos días. ¿Está la señora Vasconcelos? Is Mrs. Vasconcelos here in the office? We also use verb star to indicate someone physical temporary states. Sick, cold, tired, soft, happy, sad, bored, angry, good, bad, worried, nervous. Estamos aburridos. ¿Cómo estás hoy? Mónica, estoy un poco cansada. So it's a temporary state, guys. I'm bored. How are you today, Monica? I'm a little bit tired. Mm -hmm. To refer to a temporary situation. La casa está sucia. If I say the house is dirty, that means that only today, because it's usually clean, okay? La sopa está caliente. The soup is hot, that means just at this moment, and then it would be cold. The same idea we use in negative sentences. We place no before the verb. Ana no está en casa. Ana is not at home. Hoy no estoy de buen humor. I'm not in a good mood. <laughs> in questions, we usually place the subject after the verb. Está Juan en casa. Donde está Guatemala? So as you can see, we have está Juan. Está Guatemala. Okay. We have here. El jefe está de mal humor hoy. My boss is in a bad mood today. Las tiendas están abiertas. The stores are open. Las tiendas están cerradas. The stores are closed. So we used to talk about this just temporary situation. It's not every single day, it's only today or this afternoon, this evening, okay? If I say I'm in a bad mood, that means that only today or tomorrow I will be in a better mood, right? Let's continue, guys. So now let's compare ser and estar in order to finish this lesson. We will continue for uh, the next lesson, the following lesson with the same topic, but with more information for you guys. So we use ser to speak about normal or permanent features or qualities about someone or something. Maria está muy activa. She's usually like this. If I say Victor es muy activo, that's me all the time, right? Julian es alegre. Julian es alegre. That means um, uh, Julian is always, always happy, joyful. Okay, el hielo es frío. Well, you know, the ice is cold. It's always like that. So, okay. Sofía es delgada. She's always been thin. That's the idea of Sofía es delgada. And Rubén no es muy elegante. Once again, it's like we use verb to be to express a permanent situation or let's say it something that always been like that, right? And we use to start to speak about unusual or temporary characteristics or states about someone or something. Hoy está cansada, and that means only today. Okay, hoy no está alegre, está triste, but that means only today. Okay, el café está frío, that means only today, because tomorrow it could be hot, right? So we use these characteristics, okay? We use a star to indicate changes. Estás muy delgado, Pedro. We use a star to stress the moment. Rubén está muy elegante con ese traje. So you can notice here we have the difference between Sofía es delgada and estás muy delgado. So this is normal. I know Sofía and Sofía is always been thin. But when I say Sofía estás muy delgada, that means that something changes. Right, and I notice, and that's why I'm expressing this like <gasps> surprise. I'm I'm very surprised. I'm shocked. Right, I notice the change between 
Uh, Sofía es delgada en Sofía estás muy delgada. Okay, it means like before Sofía was a little bit chubby and now is thin. So I noticed that and that's why I'm using star. Okay, guys. Great, let's continue. And we have here some different meanings with star and star. And with this, we finish today's lesson, guys. I hope you enjoy this lesson. And this is my first video, so I hope I hope you really enjoy it. I'm gonna try to do my best to help you because it's not easy explaining Spanish by using English, and sometimes it's hard. But well, we are trying our best here, right? So we have here some adjectives have different meanings with ser or star. So este perro es muy malo. <laughs> so he's a naughty, naughty dog. He's a bad dog. Let's say like that. He, let's say that is related to his behavior, right? So we have here ser malo means badly behave or bad quality, right? So this dog is bad. He's badly behaved. So we say ser aburrido. One who doesn't know how to have fun. Yeah, it's like saying in English, she's boring, he's boring, right? Ser bueno, that means well behaved or good quality. This cell phone is good. Este teléfono es bueno, that means good quality. And I'm a good teacher, so soy un buen maestro. Yeah, I'm a good quality teacher, right? Um, ser listo means intelligent. Ser moreno, to have their hair like me, you know, soy moreno. And ser rico means to have money, right? And we have here more examples. No me gusta este libro, es muy malo. No quiero salir con Rubén, es muy aburrido. El tío de Carlos es muy rico, tiene fábricas, right? So we're expressing these ideas with the verb to be, with the first conjugation, conjugation we just so, well, I just taught you. We use ser to indicate the place or a moment of an event. Once again, la boda es en la iglesia de Santa Marta a las cinco, right? We use it to indicate the place where an event will take place, right? Yeah, sorry. And then we have uh, Pepe está malo. That means he's sick. So, Victor está malo, that means I'm sick, Victor is sick. Mm -hmm. Estar malo means be sick. Estar aburrido means has nothing to do for fun. Bored. But only at this moment. Not forever like in the first example, right? Estar bueno, tasty, delicious. Okay. Um, las papas son deliciosas or están buenas. No, las papas están buenas, that means they are tasty. Uh, estar listo, ready. Estoy listo para empezar, ¿no? I'm ready to start. Estar moreno. That means tan, okay? Estar rico, tasty once again. I don't know. Everything is related to be tasty in Spanish. I don't know why. Eh, Felipe está en la cama, está malo. It means he's sick. Estamos aburridos. ¿Qué podemos hacer? ¿Qué podemos hacer? Right? Remember, pronunciation is important. ¿Qué podemos hacer? Este cordero está muy rico. We use star to indicate place or position of something, someone or something, right? Okay, guys. If you have any questions, you can write, you can type in the comments. <laughs> And I will try to solve some doubts that you might have related to this topic. This is my first lesson online. It was a little bit strange <laughs> for me, uh, but let's go, let's keep going, right? Uh, thank you, thank you so much for watching this video. Please uh, follow me. And if you are interested in taking private lessons with me, please, you will find the information in the box down this video. Muchas gracias por quedarse hasta el final. Si ustedes están interesados en tomar clases conmigo, son bienvenidos. Tengo un perfil en Preply. Eh, bienvenidos sean a mi perfil. Y gracias. Esto fue Aprender Español con el Chilango. And see you next time.